That's uh, D5054. It's a class 24, one of four that have been preserved. And actually, I've got a model of it in that livery. <laughs> so, how are you doing today? Are you enjoying this? Yeah, no, this is quite nice. We've got some really nice weather. I'm yeah. I if that's going to move in a moment. It sounds like it. Wow. Shunt to loop's just gone up. And there was because um, it was the it was just the frames of the standard class four and the frames of the ATF as well, and it was just sort of early days right. of being restored. I must make it quite the uh, That must be about. It must have been about eighty seven, maybe eighty seven, eighty eight, something like that. This came out from the scrapyard. I think it's eighty two, eighty three. Yeah, yeah. They've got old sandblasting. Right. The first. Bit we were putting together is the pony truck at the front of two wheels of the frame. Right. So that's a stretcher that, that goes under the frame. So that kind of spreads the weight. And, and the centre bearing for the pony truck to swing right, right, goes yeah. through there. Right, right. I've never seen inside this shed before. It's always been locked up. Right. Uh, they've given me a guided tour of the, the main shed. Oh, right, there, yeah. But this one's yeah. always been locked up tight. Well, uh, some kind of bearing block, thousand block. I'm not a railway engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think and, what and it is. And looks. that's upside down. The, the wheels sitting across there. And then the, the frame goes out. Right, right. That. So it just drags the engine around the. Yeah, thing. yeah. So, so basically, that's the, the pony truck but upside down. Yeah. And that's the uh, irons where the. Um, Bearings would yeah. go. Hmm. So we've got most of our own machine tools. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that slide down there. And the axle, the axle. Oh, oh, the axle box is sliding there, did you? Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. These are the, like, the horn blocks. Ah. So the axle box is sliding yeah. down there. With the 
bearing surface. Right. And then the axles. some hefty pieces of kit, it's a nice yeah, lay. When you work on one of these, you do not need to join a gym. I can imagine. My father does um, model engineering, he only builds um, four inch scale traction engines. Oh, right. And some of the bits on that, you, you need to have your Weetabix before you attempt to lift them. Uh, I mean, it might be one third scale, but it still weighs it's about the still, same yeah. as a car when it's done. Um, and some of the bits on that, like the flywheel, trying to machine that in, um, in the lays, was really at the extreme limits of what, what he yeah. could actually do. The main sheds have got a wheel lay. Mm. So we've got the wheels for this. And they've been yeah, there's the axle box. All right, yes, I see. Mm. Right, slide down. Right, yeah, I see. So got a line of suspension. Right. Yeah, that's nice. And there's lateral springs on as well, so it doesn't just yeah, so you kind of dampen the... Yeah. Yeah, dampen it, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you for that. Yeah, so I'll cool. show you the A-frame off the... Uh, oh, right, yeah. The, uh, there we all have to put our hands in our pockets to buy some steel to make some new bolts for you. Yeah, the hat so, from... Um, yeah, the, the likes of that, you're not going to go and be able to buy some. I remember going to... Um, yeah, you can't get them from a Wilkinson's pick and mix. Yeah, no. there was um, Ashton Automatic Machining Company. And you delivered the hex, and most of the hex disappeared as swarf, and they were making nuts yeah. and bolts. But it was, um, it was all this... It used to be McCready's. Uh, it's now uh, Centre Steel, I presume you get yeah. it from. I don't know where they got it from. And if you get, go to a Centre Steel, they have a scrap skip, and they just, when it gets down to this lot, they just chuck it away, but you can make a couple of nuts and bolts. He's just making some bolts. That looks like, um, like the kind of pin, uh, pin you have on the Stevenson linkage. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what it's off, but it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just comes in on a sappy, sappy something, makes a couple of these. Yeah, they started out a piece like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got it. Yeah, yeah. No, I've seen my dad making stuff, and it's it's magic to watch. But oh. the amount of swarf that comes off and disappears, and most of your steel disappears as scrap. But, uh, and that's that's what the pony truck sits in. Right. So that's like your main. Um, yeah, that's bolted to the top of the truck, and that goes. It's always like very, a kingpin, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's obviously corroded. So what he's going to do is is turn it down. Mm -hmm. And then turn the other side yeah. and make a sleeve to go in between them. I presume that groove there is where you get grease forced I, in yeah. and that, that yeah. kind of lubricates yeah. it when it moves. Right. Yeah. God, that's hell of a job, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we don't have any apprentices to clean the place up. I was like my dad's lathe. He, he, you know, he'll brush the swarf yeah. off, but... But that's it, is it? I was always told if it's spotlessly clean, it usually means there's been a problem, so they've had to clean it to find what's wrong. Yeah. It's like the car engine. A filthy engine bay is a sign of a car that, that has been, been like left well alone because it just works. It just, yeah. you, can, you can see where the bridge would have been, like an arch bridge or something. Um, the wall's slowly coming this way. Yeah, well, it's got, I presume it's got to, it's got to um, uh, curve in at the bottom to like buttress it. If it was a flat wall, it would just fall out. No, no, but it is. It's falling apart. Oh, it. Been reported to the council too much uh, responsibility. Right. Yeah. And they say, "Oh, we we'll have a look when it looks dangerous." <laughs> yeah. Let us know when it falls. Yeah. And you get a really good view from here. I've got some really good footage. Where the train comes through, yeah. and it's like steam, smoke everywhere. This is actually one of the best places to sit. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and if it rains, you're okay as well. And if you left it all on the you don't get many pictures left. Right, right, yeah. That's the eighth grade for me. It's upside down. Right, and we, yeah, I recognise it, yeah. So basically, it swivels from there. Yeah. Right. And then that's thrown there. You see, see the big ring? Oh, the big ring, yeah. Uh, somebody donated that to the machine. And that's the throat between the, I believe, the boiler and the fiber. Right, so it's basically like a, a 
distance people yeah, you could yeah. join them together. So when you said they donated it, what did they have it made for you or did they just happen to have I, one? I think it was made for something else. Right. Besides it wasn't needed. I don't have it re machined. Right. Super. I'm with you. Oh that's always a help if people give you stuff yeah. like that. Well, one of our guys put his hands on top and had the wheels on. Right, yeah, because I can't imagine the, the time gain to me is the time. You're know, the, the sweating on the outside. Right, yeah. 70,000 pounds. I can imagine, yeah, because they've got a. It, it's quite um, a sophisticated job because you've got to cool the actual wheel down with liquid nitrogen while simultaneously heating, heating up the ring. the ring. So it, it expands, the middle shrinks. And then they're an interference fit, and when they return to room to, to ordinary temperature, it's like it just grips so really, really. You tight. need to get the coefficient of expansion of all the metals, and otherwise you'll crack something. So it's yeah, yeah. It, it's, there's a lot at stake when you do something like that. But, uh, the other thing we're doing for the tank now, you see, this is quite a sharp sweep. Yeah. Uh, they're putting flange lubricators on the engine. Oh, so that'll be on the engine itself then. Yeah. Right. So there is lubricators on the vent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but actually on the engine itself. Right. And that'll presumably cut down a lot on, on the wear. Yeah. Because it, it, there's no no means to actually turn an engine on the line, is there not? Because there's no turntable and there's no, no turning triangle. Although so there's a triangle down at Castleton. But I thought that's, that's still... We, we, it's on uh, rail track property. Yeah, because it's technically... It the, the, used to be the rail welding depot, didn't yeah. it? So is that now passed into East Lanks ownership or are they in the process of I believe of it's in our ownership, but we don't have access to it because it's on rail track. Yeah, because when you go where the bridge is, where it goes under the, the um, over the M62, there's, there's no lead into the triangle or something. So if you were to use the triangle, you end up on the main line or something. Yeah, exactly. So it just goes it, out. Yeah, yeah, so it needs rejigging to be able yeah. to actually use it without adding to it. The railway, like all the engines, point towards all the stuff. Is that because of the gradient or just because <clears throat> it's more photogenic? I, I really, I'm not, the reason you want to tank that way is so they can fall into Ram's bottom and uh, water it without breaking any of the track circuits. Right. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Nobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.